It was on an ordinary Thursday that the fabric of our conventional existence was unexpectedly torn. Work had been less demanding that day, allowing me to return home earlier than usual, a surprise I hoped would delight Marcus. The thought of catching him off guard and maybe sparking a flash of our old spontaneity excited me. As I inserted my key into the lock, the silence from within was as expected, but stepping inside, I felt a shift in the air, a whisper of something amiss. The house was too still, the kind of stillness that screamed that something was out of place. Driven by a mix of curiosity and a strange intuition, I tiptoed towards our bedroom, the silence wrapping around me like a thick fog. The door was ajar, and through the sliver of openness, I caught a sight that jolted my heart to a stop. There, in the soft glow of our bedroom, stood Marcus. But it wasn't the husband I knew, the one cloaked in the masculinity I had grown familiar with. Instead, he was adorned in my clothes, a delicate dress that hugged his frame, stockings stretching over his legs, and his feet slipped into my heels. His reflection stared back at him from the mirror, a look of contentment, or perhaps liberation, painted across his face. For a moment, time stood still, and a torrent of emotions crashed over me. Surprise, confusion, and an inexplicable sense of intrusion spiraled into a whirlwind of thoughts. Why had he never mentioned this? What did this mean for us? My initial shock was quickly shrouded by a wave of affection for the vulnerability he unknowingly displayed before me. With a gentle knock on the open door, I announced my presence, watching as his figure stiffened, the image of his joyous escape crumbling under the weight of reality. As he turned to face me, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and embarrassment, I knew our lives were about to change. The room was thick with tension, a tangible veil that seemed to mute the usual comfort of our bedroom. Marcus stood frozen, a statue of vulnerability, his eyes reflecting a turmoil of emotions, shame, fear, and a silent plea for understanding. The sight of him, so fragile and exposed, stirred a well of unexpected emotions within me. My initial shock began to ebb, replaced by a rising tide of compassion and an intense curiosity about this hidden aspect of his life. I took a slow, deliberate step into the room, my heart pounding with a mixture of apprehension and resolve. The air between us was charged, heavy with unspoken questions and the weight of a thousand possible futures. I reached out, my hand trembling slightly, and gently touched his arm. He flinched, not from the coolness of my touch, but from the uncertainty of my reaction. Marcus, I began, my voice a soft mixture of warmth and inquiry. I, I didn't expect to come home to this, but here we are. I paused, giving space to the silence, allowing the gravity of the moment to sink in. I want you to talk to me. Tell me about this part of you. The words seemed to unlock something in him, and the dam holding back his emotions began to crack. His voice was a fragile whisper, laced with relief and a hint of fear. Elena, I, I've had these feelings for a long time. Dressing like this, it's a part of me I've hidden away, scared of what it might mean, terrified of what you might think. His admission hung in the air, a delicate truth that seemed to draw us into a closer orbit. I listened, my heart aching with love for the man I saw before me, a man bearing his soul, revealing his most intimate secret. As he spoke, the pieces of a hidden puzzle began to fall into place. His occasional distant moods, the misplaced items of my clothing, the subtle hints of something more lurking beneath his surface. I realized that this was not a whim, but a deeply ingrained aspect of his identity, a part of him yearning for expression and acceptance. The gravity of his confession sparked an unexpected resolve within me. This was uncharted territory, but it was clear that our path forward would be one of mutual exploration and understanding. An idea began to form a playful yet profound proposition that might allow us to navigate this new landscape together. Marcus, 
I said, my voice steady and clear. What if we turned this into something beautiful? What if, what if you embraced this part of you more openly, but with a twist? His eyes, filled with a mix of hope and confusion, met mine as I continued, what if you became my maid? Not just dressing up, but really taking on the role, transforming this discovery into an adventure for both of us. The suggestion hung between us, bold and audacious. It was a proposal that pushed the boundaries of our conventional life, inviting us into a world of playful power dynamics, of exploration and acceptance. We sat down together, the atmosphere filled with a newfound openness. It was time to lay the groundwork for this bold new arrangement. We discussed boundaries, expectations, and the practicalities of Marcus's transformation into the role of a maid. It was crucial to approach this with sensitivity and care, ensuring it was an empowering experience for him and a mutually gratifying shift in our relationship dynamics. I could see the mix of apprehension and excitement in Marcus's eyes as we talked. He was about to express a part of himself that had been hidden away for so long, and I was determined to support him every step of the way. We agreed on a set of guidelines, like when and how he would dress, combining his need for expression with our mutual comfort levels. The transformation started with choosing the perfect wig, an essential element that would significantly alter Marcus's appearance. We selected a style that complemented his features, a beautiful, cascading wig that framed his face gently, softening his features and enhancing his emerging femininity. As I carefully fitted the wig onto his head, adjusting it to sit perfectly, I could see him watching himself in the mirror, a mix of disbelief and awe in his eyes. The person staring back at him was familiar yet new, a reflection of his inner self that was finally allowed to surface. The next step was removing his body hair, a process that symbolized shedding his old identity to fully embrace his new persona. This act of transformation was both physical and symbolic, stripping away the layers of his former self to reveal the softness beneath. As we proceeded, each stroke of the razor not only removed hair, but also the ingrained expectations of masculinity he had carried for so long. It was a liberating, albeit vulnerable, experience for him, stepping into a world that defied the conventions he had known. Choosing a female name was a pivotal moment in his transformation. We decided on Sophia, a name that resonated with both of us, embodying elegance and strength. This new name was more than just a label. It was an affirmation of his identity, a word that acknowledged and celebrated the person he was becoming. Whenever I called him Sophia, it reinforced his new identity, anchoring his transformation in reality. Refining his eyebrows was a subtle yet impactful change, enhancing the femininity of his face. The meticulous plucking reshaped his brows, accentuating his eyes and altering his expressions in subtle, feminine ways. This attention to detail was crucial, each pluck symbolizing a step closer to aligning his outer appearance with his inner self. Introducing lingerie was an intimate aspect of the transformation. The delicate fabrics and feminine designs celebrated his body in a new light, embracing a sensuality and softness that had been suppressed. This wasn't just about attire. It was about allowing him to feel comfortable and beautiful in his own skin, connecting with aspects of his femininity that had been unexplored. The maid outfit was the centerpiece of his transformation, a symbol of the role he was eager to embody. We chose a classic design that was both elegant and functional, tailored to fit him perfectly. Slipping into the outfit, he admired himself in the mirror, the fabric hugging his newly embraced curves. The outfit was a powerful emblem of his submission and willingness to explore this dynamic, blending traditional femininity with a touch of playful submission. Finally, the high heels were the last piece of the transformation, the literal and figurative foundation of his new persona. Learning to walk in them was both a challenge and a thrill, 
each step a testament to his commitment to this journey. The heels not only elevated his height, but also his confidence, completing the transformation from Marcus to Sophia, from husband to maid, in a profound celebration of his newfound identity. With each step off this transformation, I watched Sophia emerge more confidently, her essence shining through with increasing clarity. It was a metamorphosis that touched the core of our beings, reshaping not only how we saw each other, but also how we perceived love, identity, and the infinite possibilities of our shared journey. With Sophia's transformation complete, the air between us tingled with a new energy, a mix of nervous anticipation and exhilarating possibility. Her appearance was impeccable, the embodiment of a perfect maid, yet it was her willingness to embrace this vulnerability that truly marked the beginning of our journey into this uncharted territory. I took a moment to admire her, the symbol of her submission, not just in attire but in spirit, before stepping into my role with a newfound confidence. All right, Sophia, I began, my voice laced with a gentle firmness. It's time to begin your duties. There was a subtle shift in her demeanor, a visible surrender to the role she had chosen, her eyes lowering slightly in anticipation of my commands. I started with simple tasks, wanting her to ease into her role with grace. Please tidy the living room first and ensure everything is dust-free. Watching her move about the room, her movements were tentative at first, but soon they flowed with more assurance, each step and gesture infused with a delicate femininity that was mesmerizing to witness. The tasks grew progressively more detailed, each one a test of her obedience and a reinforcement of our evolving dynamic. Now, organize the bookshelf by genre, and then the kitchen needs a thorough cleaning. My instructions were met with a soft, obedient, Yes, ma'am her voice a melodic whisper that affirmed her submission and enjoyment of her role. As the day progressed, I found a sense of empowerment in this role, a pleasure in the control and the care I held over Sophia. It was a dance of power, yes, but also a profound exchange of trust and intimacy. I watched her, the swish of her skirt, the careful way she arranged the dishes, each action a testament to her acceptance and revelry in her new identity. Make sure the silver is polished and the linens are fresh for tonight, I directed, my commands becoming more assertive as we both settled deeper into our roles. Sophia's responses were quick and eager, her dedication to her duties clear in her meticulous attention to detail and the pride she took in her work. Observing Sophia as she cleaned, I saw an opportunity to guide her further into her role. Sophia, I called out, my tone firm yet caring, signaling her to pause and attend to me. Your efforts are commendable, but a true maid moves with elegance and grace. Your movements should reflect the poise and delicacy of your position. I could see the flicker of disappointment in her eyes, the desire to please me evident in her posture that momentarily drooped, Yet there was also a willingness to learn, to embrace fully the nuances of her new identity. I'm sorry, ma'am, she responded, her voice tinged with a genuine eagerness to improve. Please, show me how. I stood up, ready to transform this moment into a valuable lesson. Watch closely, I instructed, demonstrating the refined, fluid movements that characterized feminine grace. Each motion should be deliberate, smooth, and poised. Your presence should bring calmness and beauty into the room. Sophia watched intently, her eyes tracing my every move. I emphasized the importance of posture, the elegance of hand gestures, and the softness of footfalls. Try to glide as you move, maintaining poise and composure, ensuring every task is performed with meticulous care and inherent grace, I guided her, offering a model for her to emulate. It was then time for practical application. I had Sophia resume her cleaning duties, this time with a renewed focus on integrating grace into her movements. Let's see you dust the shelves again, Sophia. Remember, your movements are an extension of your femininity. As she moved through the room, 
her grace became more pronounced, a dance-like rhythm to her chores that had been absent before. Excellent, Sophia, I commended, watching as she glided from one end of the room to the other, her posture poised and her steps measured. The transformation was remarkable, her entire demeanor now reflecting the serene, composed nature of her sissy-made persona. Her focus was intense, yet there was a lightness to her, a newfound joy in the expression of her identity through these graceful movements. Each task, from straightening cushions to arranging flowers, was performed with a meticulous, gentle touch, her actions as much a part of her expression as her outfit. We moved through the house, each room offering new opportunities for Sophia to practice and perfect her grace. In the kitchen, her movements were fluid and efficient, a harmonious blend of practicality and elegance. Even the mundane act of organizing the pantry became a display of her graceful commitment to her role, her every motion deliberate and refined. Hope you enjoyed this story, and if you're looking for a daily escape into the world of cross-dressing, subscribe now and enjoy new stories every single day.